Great morning, holy brothers! We are on the 20th of Tevis, happens to be the first of the Goyesh English New Year. And today we are in the Garden of Peace on page 169, Heaven in This World. And today's lesson is called Happy Homes. Happy Homes. Oh yes, Hashem desires us. To be with him, and he wants to dwell among us. Right? It says in Exodus 25, 8, And they will make a sanctuary for me, and I will dwell, dwell with them. Hashem doesn't say, I will dwell in it. I'm going to be in that building, that base of Midrash, that home. But rather, when he says, referring to the sanctuary, I will dwell in them. Inside every single one of us, together. Hashem's greatest joy is that every Jewish home should become a miniature Beis HaMikdash, the miniature sanctuary where the divine rest, presence, can be rested, can dwell, can be that glue that holds everything together. Then guess what? There's no need to travel all the way to that western wall to pray from Haifa, from New York, from wherever you are. One can simply go inside a Jewish home where there is true peace between a husband and wife. You have marital bliss. You have such harmony. And then go into that mailbox. Take your little prayer notes and put it inside the cracks. (laughs) Put it in their wall. Literally. Because you want to go where the Shekhinah is. You want to go close to where Hashem is. All you got to do is find a place where there's pure peace in the home. That's it. You're coming close to that Shechina where there's so much extra concentration of godliness, spirituality, where it's not spread out and dispersed. Like when you have hot water, the molecules get further spread around and everything flies by each other. When you have cold, it contracts and turns into ice. Right? Mm -hmm. You want to solidify spirituality. You want to be in a place where there's that super concentration. A peaceful, loving home is the vessel that invokes every type of blessing in the world. Open up the Gemara. The bracha comes through the wife. You're going to be bringing strife into your relationship. You're going to be destroying your parnasa. You are killing your flow. You are redirecting it and clogging your pipelines. Marital success brings material success. Good income. Good health. Spiritual fulfillment, growth, happiness, even the ultimate ke'ula, the final redemption of the world, depends on caring, loving, peaceful, harmonic homes. Everyone functions better in a happy home. Everyone who has a supportive and loving and caring environment is so much more productive, is so much more happy, gets things done so much more effectively. An environment produces emotionally healthy people, which are the most efficient, they are creative, they are positively productive, and they are magnificent members of society. A man with peace at home has a clear mind and can focus on his studies, he can be wonderful in his work, he can be productive in his prayers, he can be pure in his personal growth, and guaranteed to be graciously giving to others. Yeah? But in a home where there is no peace, where there are fires, almost everyone suffocates and suffers from extreme emotional problems. That's it. You want to see somebody that is going to be go-lucky, happy, running around with such positivity? Look at the home. Look at where the peace is stemming from. If they have problems, they're going to be carrying that on their shoulders. They're going to be so much more stressed. I guarantee you. What is also true, but is far less apparent, is that the future redemption of the world, not just his home, not just his own personal redemption, his own happiness, but the universes and the world is dependent upon Shalom bias, as we will explain shortly with Hashem's help. All right. The importance of guidance. Now Rabbi's talking. From my many years of work 
with domestic peace problems, I found a common denominator in virtually every case. The couple has not received proper pre-marital coaching. They have not had advice. People get married, they come into a relationship with no flipping clue how to act. They don't know what they're supposed to do. They go in, oh great, I'm in love with the girl. We're gonna have so much fun. We're gonna have a great relationship. She's gonna be my best buddy. Oh boy. They have no idea what marriage is about. Nobody taught them. They have no clue. People come to me left and right every single day. They say, they have, how's your show and bias? How is the peace in your home? How's the relationship with your wife? Great, no problem. What's going on? Good. No, no, no. <laughs> so crazy. You start to analyze. You start to inspect. You start to realize what is going on there and how things need to be drastically different. Couples with problems are normal in every way. They don't have an intention to hurt one another or to be stabbing their spouse. They just think, you know, this is normal. What do you mean? This is how I act? Shouldn't this be how she acts? Right? Both a husband and a wife, they share a goal of a peaceful, loving, supportive relationship. But what's missing is the practical know-how, how to achieve it. They've never opened a book. They have no idea what they're supposed to be doing. Nobody taught them. It's not their fault. It may have never occurred to them that there was even anything to learn. What do you, what do you mean? So how am I supposed to act? What am I not doing? What am I doing? not doing right? Often, people are like this. So it's so common. Once people are open to learning about the differences between the sexes, that a woman is not like a husband, that a wife does not think like a man does, then you start to learn that there's a secret ingredient to success, to live together. Peace is not far from coming. However, there are many men who object and are stubborn and they stick their feet in the mud. They want to be right. They think they know what they're doing and they don't even want to hear or to learn the basics of what it means to have a successful marriage. They think they're the man in the relationship. They have to run the house. They have to rule the house. Every single say, thing I say, my wife has to listen to me. She should be running when I tell her to do something. They are so caught up in the Western world, in this modern idea of what matrimony should be. They, have, they are so lost. It's such a shame when you see this going on. You just want to help people. You just want to say, listen, buddy, can I show you something? Can I teach you? Can I send you Eliezer's lessons? Maybe there's something that you have not thought of before. Maybe there's a way you can have a little more peace in your home and not have to have arguments and blow-ups and explosions. Some people think there's simply no need. What are you talking about? What do I need to learn? Did my parents learn about peace in the home? Am I so simple-minded that somebody needs to explain to me how to live with my wife? Get out of here. Go away. Just as everybody else gets married. They'll manage, I'll manage. It's not a problem. I don't know what you're, what you're doing every morning, what you're wasting your time with, what you're learning lessons for. <laughs> stop, stop wasting your life. Leave me alone. Don't waste mine either. In the case of living together with a roommate, let's say you have a roommate, right? I've had roommates with some of my best friends. Me too. It is the worst scenario possible. And my relatives. Louder. And my relatives. It's yeah. The worst. You think that you're such close friends with somebody that you can live so close together. It becomes the biggest fires flaming in the world. Everything starts to get on your nerves. The things that you thought you liked about them, now you start to hate about them. You like to do something. You may have like 90%. Yeah, we're cool, bro. And all of a sudden there's 10%. But that 10% is going to be driving you nuts. Oh, yeah, we like to listen to music. But not at 2 o'clock in the morning. I want to go to bed. What are you talking about? I like the lights on. I can read. I can do everything. He wants the lights off. What do you need the lights off when you sleep for? Just close your eyes. What's your problem? Leave me alone. Shut your music off. Yeah, that bothers me. The lights here. I'll give you blinders. You can close your, put your pillow on your head. What's your problem? Keep your dirty clothes on that side of the room. Oh, now it's on his side, but now it's stinking up my whole room. And I haven't done laundry in four weeks. Now it's becoming my problem, not just your problem, because it's my room too. 
you can, don't destroy. Anyway, back to this. So, in the case of living together with a roommate, when one guy lives with another guy, okay, then we can start to justify arguments. Then, okay, listen, we're on the same wavelength. Maybe we can be chill. If I ask you to do something, okay, you didn't do it five times in a row? Okay, I'm going to ask you one more time, no problem. Use a dose of common sense. Have some sensitivity. Having, be willing to compromise on some things. Okay, chill, no problem. With two guys, we'll make it work out. We'll go have a beer. We'll go watch a movie. We'll go play some games together. We'll work it out peacefully. Okay, maybe that can be done. It's not easy, but it can be done because you're chill. But marriage is not two guys living together. Marriage is not, hey, dude, let's go have a beer. Marriage is about a man living with his wife in close quarters with a woman who is completely different than from him in every single way. Not like you, dude. She's not your bro. She's not your roommate that you can chill with. She is not. She sees the world from the completely opposite perspective. You are in the northern hemisphere. She's in the south pole. She's not even in the same world. No. <laughs> Forget the continent. It's a different galaxy, man. She's in an alternate dimension than you. She does not see things the way that you do. I mean, if you're not married, you may not understand this. But if you are, please open your eyes. At least understand from the most simplest perspective that she is not on your wavelength, man. If you don't understand that, I don't know what to do for you. She is reacting differently to situations than you do. She has emotions and hormones you can't even begin to understand or dream of. She has priorities and values totally different than yours. When the garbage is overflowing, we say, consider a few more days. What's the problem? She wants it out now! Not five minutes from now. Even if she says five minutes from now, she does not mean five minutes from now. It's a different language. It's a completely different subtext. And you have a goal to try to understand at least a little bit on what she's meaning with what even she's not saying to you. Without an understanding of what makes a wife tick, what is driving her, a husband is bound to make the biggest, most monumental mistakes in life. Without even understanding what he's doing wrong. He comes to me, she's yelling at me. What is she yelling about? I didn't even do anything. She's crazy. She's nuts. She's bringing stuff up from 25,000 years ago that don't even have any effect on what's happening right now. What is wrong with her? Please, go give her therapy. Send her to somebody. Put her in a class in the morning. It's had nothing to do with me. There's a fundamental difference between a man and a woman. Whoa, man. You know? <laughs> Few people appreciate how extreme the difference is between them. The Yetzirah, the evil inclination of a man, is entirely drastically different into the evil inclination of a woman. A man's way of thinking and his emotional attachment to certain things are not to others, are so different to that of a woman. This topic requires so much deep depth in learning. If a husband will only begin to realize the tremendous difference, how far away they are between the spiritual makeup, the mental makeup of man and woman, then they would at least seek out somebody a little bit capable to teach them that their wife is different and how to deal, how to live, how to be successful having her in your life. You have a problem, don't ignore it, don't pretend it's not there, and don't think that it's not going to blow up in your face. Everything that goes wrong, if there's an argument, if there's a disagreement, if there's a problem, stop for a second and think, is there something you could be doing to enhance and better your relationship with your wife? If you blame something on her, you might be winning the battle, but you're completely losing the war. And the more battles that you win, the more you're going to be losing the war in the greater exponential effort that you're trying to give is going to destroy you. Just use some common sense. Whether you talk to a friend, whether you talk to a rabbi, whether you talk to a psychiatrist, hopefully somebody that's at least kosher in the world that'll, that'll steer you on the right track. 
And the matter does not depend on intellect. It's not how smart you are, but it's how much you're learning and understanding. Just as a person would not expect to understand medicine without having gone and studied for years in school, so too a man cannot expect to understand his wife, to live successfully with her, or to treat her properly, and to know what to do for her without learning something on the issue. You don't have to be a tzaddik. You don't have to pretend to be totally pure. Just understand that we can be better a little bit and want to learn. Have a desire to be a little better, to treat her more properly. Besides, the difference between men and women, marriage also brings with it a whole package of new mitzvahs for a husband. To be able to fulfill and each and every one of these mitzvahs, as in every other mitzvah, requires Torah study. Everything in the Torah can be analyzed, understood, unwrapped. This is the same exact thing. Okay, you, don't want, to, you want to talk about your relationship? You want to think that you're, you're amazing and you can get it on your own? Fine, but at least stop for a second. Are there mitzvahs involved in marriage? Yes. Is there a Torah pers- perspective to understand? Yes. So at least let's start with that and then go from there. Okay? For example, everybody knows that in order to put on tefillin properly every single day, can you just do it on your own and expect to know what you're doing? You need instructions. You need to know how to put it on. When, when should you put it on? Somebody asked me in the morning yesterday, you know, when's the time for, there's a time for towels and tefillin. Okay, so let's say I can't make that time. I'm going to work. Can I put it on an hour before? No! It's not your mitzvah. Middle night. What are you doing? You're, you may be doing a bracha of a wasting God's name in vain. And, and putting on feeling because you feel like you want to achieve something, you're completely doing the wrong thing. You need to know halacha. When to do it. How to do it. Where do you put the one on your hand? Can you swap them if you just pull one out of the bag and put the other one on? Are there different things inside of them? Are they designed differently? Do they have different purposes, functionalities? Where does it go on your arm? Which way does it have to face? How do you wrap it when you put it on? Where does it need to sit on your head? Hello, there are so many laws in what to do. In those situations. If a person were to buy the most beautiful and kosher pair of tefillin in the world, the fact that you have them means almost nothing if you're not putting them in the right place on your head. Do you put it where your hair grows or where it doesn't grow? And many mistakenly people do. And where, what are you doing? And he will not fulfill the mitzvah no matter how many years he's had them in his drawer, sitting in his bag. The most beautiful pair. Such a, such a waste. The mitzvah tefillin is one of the most simplest ones to fulfill. Far easier than the many mitzvahs involved in marriage. And yet, you know, people go to rabbis for that. But when it comes to your wife, you're not going to open your mouth and talk to somebody. It requires extensive study to fulfill it properly. All the more so, a successful marriage requires effort, learning, guidance, prayer, and divine assistance. Want to do the best you can in every area of your life. And at least take one of the most complicated ones involving your wife and want to be better and eliminate strife. Thank you, brothers. Have an awesome, dangerously amazing rest of your day.